Hey, what's up, world? It's Patrick Lovell, Truth Bomb riffing on uh, Saturday, September 30th, 2023, approximately 12, 15 p.m. my time. And uh, it's a crazy world. And I have had uh, really a remarkable week, a remarkable week in um, reality and a remarkable week in social media. And um, I'm going to try to connect the dot, uh, dots as quickly as as I can, because I find that when I do these things shorter, I tend to get bigger audiences and go figure. But um, look, I I guess the overview, first and foremost, of what I want to kind of just entertain and, and, and get to know you on a personal basis is that, look, I'm a positive person. All right. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a business person. I'm actually a capitalist in what I do because I'm a producer. And to be able to produce work, you got to have capital, which means you have to have investors, which you have to have a business plan. You have to be able to make things happen. But the beautiful thing about being in production is you typically, vis-a-vis -vis if you're paying attention to the writer's strike or the actor's strike and that sort of thing, is it's a collaboration amongst a lot of very talented and incredibly, um, quite frankly, genius people that uh, come together on a project. And as a producer, typically, if you're above the line, you're the kind of guy that raises the money. In this case, many people uh, refer to that sort of... Um, framing as a um, executive producer, but I, I'm mostly a producer. I bring money projects together, try to make things happen and move it forward. And that's what I've been doing for 25 years. And so um, when you hear me really berate the system and corruption and everything that it constitutes, where I'm coming from is the position of a competitor. I'm com coming from a position of an entrepreneur, of an upwardly mobile sort of dynamic thing has got to come together to you know, make incredible things happen. And that's always been my sort of composite of the United States and what we're all about and what we're all you know, really implanted with. And you kind of pick your lane and in the direction you're going to evolve in your own life based on education and what you do and so forth that puts you into whatever your career becomes. And um, you know, for me, it was always about first and foremost opportunity, which is made possible by the law. Because when you're an entrepreneur, it helps if you come from an athletic background. And I came from an athletic background. I played all the sports growing up, and football has always been my game over and above everything else. I love rugby. I love all the major sports, um, but football is my thing. And, of course, Saturday being a college football day, I'm spending a little time here today just to try to convey <clears throat> you know, what we all know. We all love football or any sport, and we ultimately get behind our team through good times and bad times if we're a loyal fan, but we really ride the wave, and it, we, we take it like into our hearts and our soul. If our team makes it you know, over above all of the challenges that it has to come through to become a champion, and in that process, if we were to learn that the deck was stacked or there was inside collusion or there was some sort of cheating, um, we wouldn't tolerate it. We wouldn't tolerate it in our sports, especially in college football, professional sports, Super Bowl, national championship. You don't cheat, but I'm going to use this with a caveat. You don't cheat to become a champion. There are no shortcuts. Only hardworking, incredibly committed, and sometimes lucky under those circumstances rise to the top to have the opportunity to do the great things that we all celebrate in. And to get to the, you know, the top of the mountain is no easy ride, and hence... Typically, those athletes that make it that far make staggering amounts of money because they earned it and because we pay for it. And that's part and parcel to the dynamism. Now, I said that most people don't get there by cheating, uh, meaning operations and organizations and everything else, with the caveat if there's monopoly. The Blue Bloods in college football, we've all known, have always had the cream of the crop and the resources and everything else, which gives them the television time that gives the, you know, the, the best athletes that come from wherever they're coming from the opportunity to go through the system, to get to the top, to get to the playing field, to wind up in the NFL, and then only a handful of those are going to wind up being Super Bowl champions. It's a glorious process, and it's magnificent. And I, and I, and I believe millions of us you know, ride the lightning, and, and if we're not – actually doing it on the field we live vicariously through our players and we try to adapt that to our own lives which i've done my entire career that's why i go absolutely berserk about corruption because i don't tolerate corruption but that's what we're in the midst of because you the american people 
don't know what's going on because mainstream media has betrayed you because mainstream media is a part of this. And then as a result, we've had a fractured marketplace of ideas that have led to, you know, basically a, a, a Titanic sinking ship. And that's MAGA, the zombie apocalypse. The stupidity of Trump and his supporters is beyond comprehension. They all claim to be patriots. They all claim to be some variation of like, this guy is the answer to the corruption that birthed this guy who was beyond comprehension corrupt. And so, for example, the last week has been kind of a sum total of what I've been laying on you for the last year and a half. Donald Trump has hyperinflated his assets to literally loot, steal, and cheat using the system and inside collusion to be able to get millions upon millions of dollars in appraised assets to basically steal and a lot of times become bankrupt because bankruptcy is his thing. It's called bankruptcy is for profit. Yeah, it's been a thing for like going back to the 80s and when you're Donald Trump and you're born on third base because Fred Trump gave him hundreds of millions of dollars. I think he had a billion dollars and had he just invested it, you know, with some sort of like money management firm, he'd probably be worth 10 times what he's worth now. But because he likes to be in the in the, you know, in the field and he likes to do what he does because he's a sick human being and all the things that come with it. And I guess he likes to ride, you know, the, the razor's edge because he thinks it's fun because he likes to like manipulate media, fake media. That's where it came from. But he wasn't wrong. He's been doing it for four decades in certain pockets. My God, he was affiliated with the National Enquirer and that guy, David Pecker, absolutely hilarious name considering who he is. But we used to put that on the sidelines, right? We used to think of that as just for people in the checkout lines and dumb people. And it was just kind of funny. And every once in a while, there might be some truth inside those pages, but it just evolved into a media sort of fanfare and all the mainstream media got in on it. Like I've been saying in these truth bomb riffs, you know, the CEOs of all of these major media companies like CBS and, and, and Fox and, and um, CNN and so forth, they were all like Trump's good for ratings. And they played Russian roulette with everybody. But, but, but Trump is just an expression and a consequence of everything that I'm revealing to you. And so set aside in, in, in one kind of, you know, let, let's put that in this, this, this element here, right? All of Donald Trump's appraisal fraud. But it's just morphed into this like sort of hate zombie Confederate Nazi, some sort of variation of people that are just like, look, the whole system's so corrupt that I got to go somewhere. I got to orient somewhere. And meanwhile, they just don't even understand the basics because mainstream media has absolutely lied to us for decades. I mean, I said it yesterday and I'll say it again in a much more abbreviated fashion. Look, we never got to the bottom of 9-11, just like Donald Trump said, and he's exploiting that, which is absolutely sickening. But at the same time, everything that he is expressing is a window into everything and how it works. I'm not telling you that it was like some inside job cohesion where it was like Mossad and the CIA planted explosives all over 9-11. No, it, I'm talking about the, the actual, you know, uh, the 9-11 hijackers, the terrorists that were in the United States. They had... Um, you know, actual assistance um, from the Saudi, you know, monarchy. And we knew that we knew where they were. And then, you know, 9-11 happened when it would have been like so easy to thwart. Okay. So that's one story. The other story is everything that I've been telling you. And if you understood what I'm telling you, you'd understand the economy is like this. And I'll give you like the five minute elevator version. Okay. The United States killed the golden goose decades ago. We're not a, uh, you know, industrial powerhouse like we once were. We're an academic and intelligent uh, powerhouse, but a financial powerhouse. And we became a financial middleman where our, you know, um, you know, our, our, our uh, asset managers and our uh, hedge fund guys and our, you know, private equity and everything else throughout the whole course of this, you know, last four decades through the financialization of the United States, we farmed out the golden goose. So we manufacture everything in Asia. We have a lot of, you know, uh, influence from Middle Eastern um, fossil fuel dependence and that sort of thing, even though we're the largest oil and gas uh, producer in the world, but our dollar bill, in uh, our dollar currency and the hegemony and everything else is tied to this whole thing. And as it turns out, we've been talking a lot about the BRICS countries and potentially getting off of the, uh, the dollar as the world's reserve currency. But really, as it appears, all of the oligarchs that are in on it from all of these different countries need us to do this because the way it works is that, you know, we have this huge, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, just the opposite of financial, we're financial surplus because, you know, we, we're actually a debt country, right? So, Ultimately, everybody's manufacturing and we're buying all of their goods and then they invest from our buying the goods into our stock market, into our real estate, and then real estate can be manipulated. I got called out the other day from this guy who listens to my truth bombs a lot and he's like, man, I'm with you all the time, but I can't believe you're a Russiagate conspiracy guy. He's like, you just lost me. And I'm like, no, I'm not. And this isn't a conspiracy when I talk about Deutsche Bank being the connection between Putin 
and Trump. Now, meanwhile, we've seen in the last week, you know, Russell Brand and everything that happened with, you know, four women coming out and it was like news in the cycle. And then Putin, I mean, excuse me, Russell got more and more into what he's been talking about, like the deep state's going to try to, you know, kneecap him and all that kind of stuff. But meanwhile, all he is is a vector for Tucker Carlson, who's a vector for all things Trump and Putin. And it's all this inside pool and collusion. And there's all these confusing things happening. Yesterday, it was tra trending on uh, Twitter. There was this, um, you know, Roger Waters scenario because he couldn't get into UPenn because his position on Palestine, uh, the Palestinians. And then, of course, I'm trying to think of his operation. That's kind of like the anti um, B what is it? I want to say it's BDL, but I can't remember the abbreviation, but then it became anti-Semitism and this other stuff when anybody who's known Roger Waters for as long as I have, and I, you know, absolutely, you know, lived on Pink Floyd for a long time, as well as, uh, you know, the wall, and he's anti-fascist. I think he calls it like he sees it because Israel is as much of a democracy now as the United States is. And there's all sorts of weird sort of confangled madness between the Saudi Arabian theocracy and what this autocracy in Israel is. And just recently, there were, you know, hundreds of thousands of Amer um, Israeli demonstrators who are all pro-democracy who took to the streets and it actually got some headway and some traction in the media in the United States where Benjamin Netanyahu was overreached because of the Supreme Court, which is another version of autocracy. So you have all of these right-wing sort of calibrations that are destroying and disseminating and perverting and manipulating and diabolically betraying democracy, acting as if they're you know, some part of the, demo, the demo, democratic process. No, it's all a collusion kind of gang rape to be in position to do what I've been talking about for, I think, the last year and a half, which is this Game of Thrones scenario where it's like whoever the winning tribe is, and in this case, I call it the new robber barons versus the new confederacy. It's like, get the White House, get Congress, get the Supreme Court, and above all, get the Federal Reserve. You have that, then you've got this vertical, which I call a corporate fascist state undergirded by a criminal syndicate that uses socialism to basically guarantee the mafiocracy that's now fueling fascism. Okay, that's a mouthful. So what does it all mean in, 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 in context to who I am? Am I anti-capitalism? Am I anti-entrepreneurialism? No, I am actually, I guess you might, if you want to put me in kind of a, uh, you know, a, a, a box, I might call myself a social democrat in a sense because you've got to have social safety nets. But I know that we've been doing using socialism, which is tens of trillions of dollars to the top 1%, but the top 001%, all illegally, where we've given tens of trillions of dollars uh, to billionaires. But beyond that, we gave it to the financialist system that blew up the world based on everything I show you in the con at www.thecon.tv. That is the blueprint for everything and that the entire system of media has made sure that you don't know. And what it's created is this sort of amalgamation of everybody talking at once because we can all talk and we all have access. But there's some who have bigger audiences than others. And guys like St. Huger is like, I've got to run for president because Biden's not going to win. And the Democratic Party has sold us down the river. And we've got to do stuff that we've known for the last 30, 40 years. And he's not wrong, but he's not right because St. Younger doesn't know the freaking blueprint. He thinks he does, but he's always talking and he's always chasing the dragon, just like everybody else, like, you know, Joe Rogan, just like, um, you know, actually Joe Rogan, not so much because he has four hours and he actually thinks and talks. Different sort of scenario. He's just not naturally like St. Hugar, but Crystal Ball and Sagar and Gente, Jimmy Dore, <clears throat> Aaron Mate, all these guys, they all chase the fucking dragon, which are these algorithms. And what I'm bringing to you is what the entire government of the United States and the entire um, um, you know, uh, media apparatus hit you, all of them. Nobody understands that Federal Reserve Act 13.3 was used illegally to pump tens of trillions of dollars to a bankrupt financial system to save itself, to circle the wagons around the billionaires and the top 10% benefited from it. But it's all a facade. It's not a real economy. It's a gambling crack cocaine economy for people that are in it and everything else is make-believe. And what I'm all about is... Really, capitalism, creative destruction. You know, it's like the best win, just like in our sports. When you get everybody together who works tirelessly, and they have a vision, and they corroborate, and they come together, they rise to the top, and we celebrate those victories because triumph is an amazing thing to watch. And that's what I'm going to do because over this last week, it's amazing. This is what I wanted to say, and then i got to give up on this because i got stuff to do today. Look, I've been around billionaires all weekend. OK, some pretty good, some bad. Can anybody billionaire be a good guy, given what I'm saying? Yeah, they're not all in on it, but there's apparatuses in their system through it. But I actually got a chance to listen to guys like literally the CEO of ESPN this week. I, you know, I was up close and personal with, um, you know, what's his name? The uh, Jesus, I was about to t Ted. Um, 
whatever, man. The the, the CEOs. I'm I'm, I'm conf, conflagering. Can I can't even speak. I'm conflating two names together. The two CEOs of Netflix, and it'll come to me. I want to say Sarandos, but it's the other guy. So I was in proximity to him, and I heard him, and he was inspiring, and all of that kind of stuff. But I happened to listen to Tony Robbins, you know, for like three and a half hours on on Wednesday, and it was hilarious because. I've listened to Tony off and on, you know, and I think he's kind of one of these guys, these self-help gurus. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, never really fully in, but I always kind of like Tony Robbins, to be honest with you, from what I heard, but I never heard him speak for three hours. The dude is a powerhouse. <laughs> the dude didn't miss a beat for three and a half hours, didn't repeat himself, didn't do arms, didn't have to drink anything, was this guy that just after a while I got absorbed, but it was, you know, it was inspirational. It was like self-help. How do you better yourself? What do you do? What are the things that are patterns? How do you speak to yourself? What are you going to convince yourself to do to win? That sort of thing. And because I'm an athlete and all those things, I know how important psychology is. You have to be able to convince yourself that it doesn't matter what people think because they don't know all the stories. In fact, in, 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 in on Twitter and X, I mean, people have 12 second bandwidth. They don't understand. Like I, I put up today on my, my X feed, like I put stuff out for like the last two and a half years in addition to www.thecon.tv, which took me 10 plus years to aggregate and make real. And then of course the new untouchables and all that kind of stuff. But you know, I'm trying to get your attention over all of the noise of lies to present the $29 trillion truth that is the core of everything. If tens of millions of us could come together and unite, we unite. If you, me, and everybody you see who isn't a Nazi, who believes in dignity and decency and integrity and sustainability, if we unite in unity, we will defeat the misery of tyranny and we will usher in a clean new deal. And that is our destiny because this country can do anything it sets its mind to. We can't give up, but we've got to come together. Somehow I've got to penetrate this noise. Once you see everything I've put together, you can't unsee it. And yeah, I am asking for money. You know why I'm asking for money? Because I've already spent four and a half million dollars to bring you the $29 trillion truth while the $90 billion apparatus of government who is supposed to not bring the, allow this to happen failed to create the corruption we're into. That means 357,000 of you would have to pony up $13 just to get to the place of actually paying for this. But do you think paying for it is how this stuff comes to be? No, it's work. It's incredible tenacity. It's sacrifice. It's everything that's worthwhile. And I've gone through the ringer and I've sacrificed everything for this country. And I'm not an autocrat. I am somebody who believes in the dynamism of democracy, but I know it depends on the integrity of law. And if you know those pieces and you have the new untouchables, the guys that hold the fraud and the, and the corruption to account, there's nothing this country can't accomplish. Just look at our history. We are the country of doers, okay? But we're lost in translation because the media are a bunch of deceptive, losing whiners of freaking bullshit. Just look at the CNN debates with the Republicans. It was a fucking shit show. Pardon my language. Look, I got to go. My friends, listen, I'm trying to bring $13 for you to invest in renewing the country to save our country, save the world and do the right thing. Listen, corruption births and fuels fascism. We cannot tolerate the in insanity that our law has completely failed to hold in corporate corruption. It's insane because we're not designed as fucking monarchy. We were born to crush the, the bonds of bondage of King George III and everything that came with the apparatus of the, uh, you know, what it was at that time, the greatest empire on earth. And, you know, we broke the grips of the East India, Tra East India Trading Company, the Royal Navy, and of course, you know, the Redcoats and everything that came with it. Why? Because we had vision and we had stamina and we had a lot of problems too and it will never be perfect. Listen, people, you got to pick a side. What we've got is a, a train wreck of the lobotomized zombie circus of idiots that have been completely manipulated by this global autocratic regime that is built on fraud. And they're stealing from we the people because the Federal Reserve has used the guarantee of the uh, full faith and credit of the United States to give trillions to this apparatus that have fucked you. I know you all intuitively know it. I've got the details. I'm the only one in the country that has the details. Please absorb what I'm putting out there. 
Check it all out. Watch the con. Watch the new Untouchables. Check out Patrick Global Truth Bombs the Con on YouTube, TikTok. Join me. We need millions of dynamic players who are people that have incredible sacrifice, incredible commitment, that know right from wrong, that will rise to the moment to beat and defeat the evil of tyranny. Failure is not an option. Rise, roar, revolt. Onwards and upwards.